Solomon was providing nuggets of wisdom that I believe every single human being needs to grasp because it's going to affect some part of your life. And one thing I love about the Proverbs is that they're so real and practical. We're actually taking the time to go through this first uh, chapter of Proverbs and look at what Solomon was actually dealing with and what he was talking to us about and how it affects our lives in very specific ways. Uh, there's a story that I like to share when it comes to this particular question, have you ever been in love? Carol and I uh, attended Oral Roberts University and we arrived at um, that school and uh, still were in the early stages of just getting to know one another. Um, actually, we didn't have a personal relationship with each other. It's just uh, one of the things that all of us young people did. We just kind of hung out together. That was kind of a regular thing to just kind of hang out, especially at Oral Roberts University, depending upon what dormitories that you stayed in. It really didn't. Sometimes we'd all go to different lobbies and so uh, lobbies of various dorms and so uh, this was one of those times, and back in those days, the school was less than 2% African American. So since it really wasn't that many African Americans there, we all tended to kind of gather together uh, because of seeing, having familiar faces. So we're in a school of 4,000 people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and it's less than 2% are African American. And yes, the African Americans are going to find one another and hang out. <laughs> And so, so when well, it's not like we were together, uh, we were just all out, you know, just sitting around talking. And uh, someone wanted, decided, uh, you know, to go out. Was gonna go out to eat and all that kind of thing. And so, I think pretty much uh, everyone decided, okay, we're gonna go to eat. Then it's gonna go to a club. They used to call it discos in those days. Y'all don't know about that. <laughs> the word in those days was disco, not club. And so I was really uncomfortable with that. I didn't really want to do that. So I said I wasn't going to go. And, uh, and so Carol saw me. I didn't realize that at the moment, but I know now she saw me, you know, that I wasn't going to go. And so she decided that she wasn't going to go either. And so everybody else went except for me and Carol. Um, and we, you know, uh, sat and talked and the rest is history. No. <laughs> uh, but the reason why I use that story is because uh, Carol saw she didn't want to risk uh, the possibility of a relationship. I didn't know how interested she was in me at the time. I, had, I didn't have a clue. <laughs> didn't have a clue. <laughs> but because she didn't want to risk the possibility of a relationship with me, she did not go with the rest of the group. Uh, she stayed to, uh, to be with me. No. <laughs> but her motive was far, it wasn't, just, it wasn't an ulterior motive, it wasn't even just a selfish motive, uh, but uh, because of how she felt about me, um, she went against the grain of everybody else. And so that was a huge decision to be able to, because of your affection or your feelings for someone that in spite of all of the opinions of everybody else, uh, uh, she still stayed behind with me. Now, I'm not here to debate or talk about if whether we should have gone to the club or not. That's just where I was. I came from a pretty strict church background at that time and season of my life, so that's just where I was. Um, and so even though uh, she personally didn't feel any restriction in going. She saw that's where I was, and so she stayed behind because she saw where I was. And so she went against the grain. She went against what the possibilities of what everybody else might have thought about her because of how she felt about me. Wow. That's what I mean when I say, have you ever been in love? Have you ever been in love? to the point where in spite of what everybody else thinks, you're still gonna go for this relationship. That's really what it means to be in love. In spite of your own fears, in spite of everyone else's opinions, in spite of everything, you're going for this relationship because this 
relationship is now more important to you and this person's view and this person's opinion, this person's values, this person's priorities, uh, this person's purpose, all of that is now more important to you than anybody else around you and what they might think of you and what they might say. That's really what it means to be in love. That's what I mean when I say, have you ever been in love? A relationship can change your priorities. For your wife, you'll drop everything because of the level of that relationship. For a brother, you change your plans. You might be planning on doing something. The brother give up a phone call. Hey, dog, let's go. Let's go to the game tonight. I got some tickets. You said, even though you had some plans because it's your brother. You go, yeah, because that's a level of relationship. Now, it might even be a coworker that call you up and say, come on, man, let's go soon. And you're like, nah, man, I don't want to go. Why? Man, the relationship ain't all that. I don't want to be hanging out with you. <laughs> you don't mean nothing negative, but that ain't that kind of relationship. So a relationship is what determines the priorities. For your niece or your nephew, you might drive the extra mile to find just the perfect gift. It's for their birthday or for uh, Christmas or something like that. So because it's your niece or your nephew, this is my brother's or my sister's kid. And so for them, I'll drive over to West Shore to find the gift for them. Your, the, the level of the relationship determines the priorities that you set. So how much more when it comes to our relationship with God? That's what I'm getting at. So our nugget of wisdom is live with reverence and fear of God. What do you mean when you say reverence and fear of God? That is now comes the interesting part because you go, what? How can you connect the fear of God? Anybody ever heard that phrase, fear of God? We're a God fearing people here. <laughs> I've heard that phrase, being God fearing. <laughs> what does that really mean to have reverence and fear of God? Well, I put it in these terms. It simply means we care more about what God thinks about what we say and what we do than the rest of the crowd. That's all it means to be God-fearing. The word reverence literally means to have the fear of God. Not just scared. Ah! No, no. It means <laughs> uh, this relationship means more to me than anything. That's fear of God. I care more about what God thinks. God's opinion of us and our actions matters more than anyone else. So I'm not, it's not a, I'm scared to go to hell and therefore I'm not gonna go here and I'm not gonna go there and I'm not gonna do this and I'm not gonna do that. That ain't fear of God, that's fear of hell. <laughs> the only reason why I don't do it because I don't wanna get killed, that's fear of death. And many times people associate God with that. They associate the fear of hell, the fear of death, with the fear of God. No, that's not. And there are a lot of people that claim to be God fearing. No, they're not. They are scared of dying and they're scared of going to hell, but they're not fearing God because with the God kind of fear is more of I'm in love. I'm in love and I don't want to hurt the one that I love. I don't want to disappoint the one that I love. Big difference, ain't it? So it changes everything. Don't you like that? No, yes, yes, I've been. Then you think of it. Yeah, I've been in love because I've been to the point. I don't care what nobody thinks. Anybody ever had to make decisions against family and friends because the only thing that, you, you, that uh, mattered to you was what God thinks about this. What God thinks. How he feels about this. That's what it means. And one of the nuggets of wisdom that you find in the book of, Pro book of Proverbs is the fear of God. The fear of God, reverence, being so in love with God. The Bible refers to that as the beginning, the beginning of knowledge. <laughs>